Those against the DH say everybody needs to play both sides of the ball. But being able to play both sides of the ball adequately is not a prerequisite for either league. The hitting ability of the pitchers is totally irrelevant to being in the majors. The teams can't care how well they hit because they need their pitching talent so badly. So that's why you have 60 of your 75 starting pitchers below a 200 minimum standard. And being able to play both sides of the ball is especially irrelevant to the 113 relief pitchers you have, since they rarely bat. Relievers are a significant part of today's game, so you can't say they don't matter. Yet the top eight closers in the National League and dozens of the other busiest relievers did not bat at all, and most of the others just a few times. DH's American League played both sides a lot more than that, which I'm going to show you in the next chart. I made a list of all 15 American League teams and who started the most games for them as a DH in 2016. They are listed in the order of number of games started in the field, which is this column here, and then the last column is how many games they started as a DH. For example, Chris Davis, Oakland, he started 93 games in the field and he started 53 as a DH. Now that 53 is the most than anybody on Oakland started as a DH. As we go down the list, we see most of these DHs did play quite a bit in the field. 74 games, 70, etc. And down to number 10 is 11 games in the field. Now I'll show you the final five. Number 11, you start getting to those who did not field very much. Number 11 through 15, did not feel very much, and they did quite you know, to start quite a few games in, as a DH. But the important part is to look how much fielding that these DHs did do. That's a lot more than relievers were doing. They're playing both sides of the ball a lot more than your relief pitchers are. In all, you have nine DHs that started at least 25 games in the field. So you can see that most DHs did field quite a bit. And looking at the DH column, you see there's a lot of games somebody else had to be a DH. For example, Chris Davis was a DH for 53 games. Somebody else had to be a DH for about 100 games. And going down the list, you see the same thing for most of these other teams. So most teams rotated being a DH quite a bit among several of their players. This is good because it keeps everybody busier, including the bench players. This is the way the American League has been doing it for years, just using their existing players as DHs to some extent. And this is the way the Nash League would do it too, because the best hitters in the world are already in the major leagues. There is no outside source for DHs. That is why the American League has been doing it this way, and it has worked very well. We have gotten that 135 hitter out of the lineup, so that now all nine slots of the order are up to where they need to be. So if the Nash League did adopt the designated hitter, they would not be adding 15 players to the league who can't field. That's the image that most people have, but it would not work that way. They'd just be using their existing players to any extent as a fielder or as a DH as the manager pleases. So with nine of your primary DHs starting at least 25 games in the field, that leaves you only six who didn't field very much. And that's a drop in the bucket compared to your 113 relief pitchers who rarely bat. 